Happy Friday to you, everyone. I hope you're doing well. It's a beautiful sunny day here. And regardless of what your weather is, if you've got a puppy trying to bite you while you're trying to teach it how to heal or a few other behaviors, I'm about to bring a little sunshine into your life. This is Castell. She's our own personal puppy, part of our pack. She'll be 13 weeks old next Monday. And she loves to use her mouth. In fact, evidence by my hands. I'll have Evan come in here a little bit closer. She loves it. I got little dings all over my hands. You can't avoid those when you have a puppy. You want to interact with your puppy. They have those little razor sharp teeth. And she's the same way. I've not really worked on formal walking with her yet, but I'm going to use her to demonstrate. When I try to walk her, just even with a long line, like I've been showing in a couple videos there on our Facebook thread there, just go down and you can see those. I'll just let her drag a long line around. But nevertheless, remember, young animals learn by interacting with their environment. They learn social skills by interacting with those around them. Problem is, I'm not interacting back with sharp teeth. I have hands, I have tender skin. The older I get, it seems like the more tender it becomes. And as you see her right there, she's wanting the mouth to stick. She always wants something in her mouth. Some dogs are like that, some aren't. I've had dogs where they didn't want to grab anything. I kid you not, they wouldn't chase a ball, they wouldn't grab their leash but I've also owned many, many dogs that were the total opposite. They'll grab anything. If I walk by her and I'm dangling the leash, she grabs it. If I've got my coat, I take my coat off and my sleeves go down too far, she'll grab it. She grabs anything and everything. So I think she'll be a good little uh, uh, example here that I can show you on what to do. Okay, as you notice, I'm not holding a leash in my hands. I'm holding a stick. It's a wooden dial. And on the other end of it, there's a little I ring that I screwed into the end with a little, come on up, up here, Castell, maybe you can show it here, right here, Evan. Say she wants to bite everything. Out, <laughs> there you go, right there. Let's show it off. And a little clasp, right there hooked right to her collar. And you've heard me say many times, start right, end right. I don't believe in allowing puppies, or older dogs for that matter, big mistakes. No, we keep mistakes to a minimum. You learn how to make big mistakes. So in the beginning, I recommend that you take a little wooden dial like this or whatever you want to use. It's something that is stiff because now I can keep her away from me. If she's trying to come in here for my leg, I can keep her away. And when I'm walking, I can do the same thing. So it looks like this. Let me get her attention because remember in all dog training, you must always work on attention, motivation, cognition. What are they capable of learning at this given age? What will motivate them to learn? And what can gain their attention? So let me see if I can use food. Hey you, check that out. Work like a champ. So let's work a little bit on this feeling thing here. Heel. And we move on. Now I can show the treat and lure the puppy just like I would any other puppy. But here's the deal. With this wooden dial, she can't get close to me. I set the distance, it's set. There's no way she can defeat this as a young puppy. I can let her come in close enough to get the treat, but then that's it. Heel, once again, I keep her away with a little wind out. We use these back in my competitive days. We're training dogs that are at very, very, very high levels when it comes to skill sets. Tracking, you can use your stick to keep the dog on the track. Yeah, that's unnatural. That's not the odor plume. That's not the odor plume. That is. That's the corridor. That's not. Disturbed ground, that's where the scent is. Undisturbed ground, that's not where the scent is. So you can go back and forth off the trail, on the trail, off the trail, on the trail. But you're controlling the dog's movement with the stick. So they don't learn that, hey, let me go find that out by circling 50 feet around here and then invariably losing the track altogether. It's great for obedience. It's great for teaching down. When you finally want to teach down, just push on the stick. You'll be seeing me. I'll be doing lots of videos. I'm going to document Castell's life about the first year and a half to two years of her life with various videos, usually a once a week update and then some other videos sprinkled in. But I will be using the stick right here. So as you see, she's gnawing on the stick. She's not gnawing on me. And then when I want her to let go, out. Just work on my out, there we go. Reward, because she did do the out. 
Very good. Let me demonstrate again. Stick again. Imagine trying to do this with a flexible leash, a leather leash or, or cotton leash, nylon leash. That dog can rush in here in a second. What are you going to do? Do this? No, that doesn't look like someone walking. This does. Heel. Now my arms are down by my side. It's no inconvenience to me whatsoever. Just move them up along using the aid of a little wooden dial. And by the way, when puppies drop treats, I let them have them. Again, she's not even 13 weeks old. So I'll let her investigate that and we'll move on heel. And we'll give her another little treat. And then we come to a stop. Oh, there we go. All right, I already started to pick up that little sit. And then while I'm standing here talking, if I have a puppy that suddenly decides, okay, I did a great sit, and I've done some walking, but now I want to engage you. I can stand back here. That's all it takes is one hand, maybe even two hands. I can hold my leash like this. I can shake someone's hand. I can open up the door. I can pick up something heavy and carry it. Just one hand. This dog cannot defeat this. I had 80, 90 pound dogs, full competitive dogs. They could not defeat this. And once they learn, once a habit sets in, once we go from explicit memory, which is where we are right now, that's that thing where you learn in the very beginning. But later when you develop a habit and a skill that you can do it to a point to where you don't even have to think about it, that's called procedural land, implicit memory. When I get there off the word heal, exactly where you're supposed to be when I tell you heal, then I can remove the stick if I wish. And again, I can rotate out of this anytime I want. I just don't want your dog getting in the habit of turning your entire walking training into a wrestling match, into play, into social play. No, there's a time to work, there's a time to play, there's a time to work, there's a time to play. And you can kind of intertwine the two together. You can work with your dog. But again, dogs tend to repeat what they have success with. That's why I'm a firm believer. Start right, well, that's what you're going to have success with. End right, that's what you will have success with. You're not going to have success by reaching over here, trying to bite my leg, trying to bite my hands, trying to bite the leashes we're moving along, grabbing the leash in your mouth. No, this wind dial is not as desirable to grab. She grabbed it, but she finally let go of it because she found, ah, eh, not such a great thing to chew on. One more time. Heel. Present. And then we're just going to move along. Very good. Get my dog's attention. And if she tries to jump, I just push down on the wind dial. Boy, very good. Work her along. Get my treat out. It's hard for puppies to chew and walk at the same time. Good job. Way to go, sweetheart. And I drop the treat. But again, sit. Well done. Well done, sweetheart. Very good. Yeah, you've got to have a lot of patience with puppies, but I'm telling you what. Again, I'm going to document her growth, her development. And you're going to see as living evidence. You've already seen Captain in, I don't know what, 290 plus 300 videos. Now you're going to see how I shape these behaviors, how I shape a Captain from the ground up. So again, I encourage you to just go to your store, grab an old broom, whatever. Make sure it's not too heavy. Make sure it fits good in your hand. Everyone's got different lengths of fingers. You want to be able to grab it with ease. You might want to put some tape on it that you put maybe like on a tennis racket or golf clubs or whatever so you can hang on to it. Um, make sure that the end is not sharp in any sort of way. Don't just break it off, cut it off, sand it off. And just make sure it's a tool that you can use easily and use it in the beginning. Again, you're going to fade away from this. I'm a little captain around on a wooden dial and neither are you. One last time. Heel. Good. Again, I can keep her whatever distance I wish. She cannot come in here and grab my legs. You. And sit. See right there, she tried to jump. And if you saw that, I pushed down with my left hand. Just pushed right down on that wind dial, and it immediately pushed her back into a sit. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and unhook her. Let her just run around the like section. So you can see this up close. As you can see before. Free. The biggest mistake that you can make when you make one of these is to put some lanyard between your clasp and your eye bolt. 
No, you don't want any distance between this clasp and the, the end of the stick. You don't. Only All you want is whatever the eye bolt requires you to have. Do not have six, eight inches. Now you just defeat the purpose of it, because now the dog can go. Imagine, that's I got eight inches, paracord, some sort of rope, whatever. Now the dog simply comes in and can reach eight inches. Now add its muscle to that, stretching its neck, and next thing you know, my hand is here, and I have a dog grabbing my hand. I have a dog grabbing my legs. Don't do that. Wind out, something that can't hurt your dog. I bolt. <laughs> Hey, you. Come over here. Evan is trying to film. Good job, Evan. He's hanging in there, hanging tight there. All right, so my puppy needs my attention. I'm going to hop off of here. Use your wind out, guys. I kid you not. I've been using these for over 30 plus years. These are incredible. Uh, I, I've won at many, many high levels. And this is how it gets started, man. This is old school right here, but I told you I am old school. Works like a champ. Give it a shot. Give me some feedback. Let me know if it works for you. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Right, you. Good job.